the sun, Earth's ultimate form of energy. It rises every day and has burned bright for nearly four and a half billion years. All life depends on it. We use the sun's energy every day from the little things such as using a pencil to write on paper or even eating a cheeseburger at McDonald's. All plants use the sun's energy to make food for themselves in a process called photosynthesis. Animals eat the plants and the animals that eat animals are carnivores and of course humans, especially in America, eat everything. The sun's energy is very important to how we survive every day. But what about fossil fuels? I thought they were getting the most of our energy. Yes, the computer screen you're looking at right now was produced in a factory that used coal or oil to run its plants. Your Xbox that you play daily on your big screen TV, even the knives in your kitchen you use to cut your food, all were made in factories that burn fossil fuels. Millions of years ago, when plants and animals died, as their bodies decayed, their remains moved further underneath the Earth's crust. While they continued to decompose, pressure and heat from the Earth's crust eventually turned all their remains into sediment, which over millions of years became fossil fuels, creating oil, gas, and coal. We then burned that coal and oil and turned them into heat energy. Heat energy is transformed in power plants into electricity that goes through the power lines and into our homes, providing us with the electricity we use on a daily basis. So even the sun is a contributor to the creation of fossil fuels. And according to the Energy Information Administration, fossil fuel contributes to 86% of the U.S. energy consumption. Unfortunately, burning all these fossil fuels contributes to air pollution and emits greenhouse gases that not only take away our oxygen supply but also traps poisonous gases inside the Earth's atmosphere while deteriorating it as well, causing the proven facts of global warming. But let's leave that for another story. Solar energy is a renewable energy due to the fact that it is infinite. Alongside solar energy, there are other renewable energy sources as well, biomass, geothermal energy, wind energy, and water. Legend has it, if all these powers are combined, they bring out Captain Planet. But on to the serious note, these energies are known as green energy since they are safe for the environment and are healthy for us humans. But if solar energy is so good, why aren't we using it? The number one reason why people don't want to deal with solar power is because it is too expensive and it will never be enough to cover all the electricity in America. Well, let's just take a look at this. Man, now who's cooler than that guy? He has the first cell phone ever created. But just like the first computer, it was always too expensive. But as technology progressed, the products got cheaper. If we took the time to actually invest more in the solar energy technology, it would, like the cell phone and the computer, get cheaper. But the sun is only up in the day. What about night? There are many ways to store energy at night, but the most recent and effective way is solar thermal power plants using parabolic trolls with molten salt storage systems. And what is that? That's basically using molten salt to store the energy because unlike other storage methods, this method can deliver back 93% of the energy that was stored. It's the highest that we have yet. Yes, we can. Yes, Obama is for solar power energy. In 2009, Obama signed a stimulus packet with clean energy provisions. It was one of the largest stimulus packets to be signed with a total in amount of $787 billion. Since Obama's involvement in renewable energy, the U.S. solar energy industry had a banner year in 2010. According to the U.S. Solar Market Inside year-end review of the same year, the industry total value market grew 67% from $3.6 billion in 2009 to $6 billion in 2010, making it one of the fastest growing industries in America. And now every day, Americans across the country are going to work to well-paying stable jobs at solar companies, from the small installers all the way up to even the Fortune 500 companies. More on a local standpoint, El Paso's nickname, the Sun City, is actually one of the top places in the world to use solar energy. The El Paso Solar Energy Association was founded in 1978 and was the oldest continuously active local solar organization in the United States. 
Unfortunately, while trying to gather more information on the association, I found out that the website expired on April 15, 2011, portraying how solar energy is not being as emphasized as it was in its earlier years, not only in El Paso, but in Texas as a whole. But it's not too late. You can still take action and help not only bring jobs to the community, but help the environment as a whole as well. The House Bill 2961 will enable Representative Drew Darby of San Angelo to invest more than $1 billion in incentives for solar power. That money would be used to provide rebates for Texas homeowners and businesses to install solar power on top of rooftops and to build solar farms. The bill will reduce harmful emissions from power plants, create thousands of jobs, and help position Texas to be a national leader in solar power. Under this bill, residential customers pay only a dollar a month on their electric bills, small businesses $5 a month, and industrial consumers $50 a month to create the Solar Incentives Fund. Polls show that nearly 70% of Texans are willing to pay this small fee. This link will send you to a webpage that only takes minutes to send a message as a petition to Representative Drew Darby. Take action now. Not only will this help our state bring more jobs into our local community, but also make this world a safer and greener planet. Thank you.